this case study is one of the most special case studies uh, ever in BizHack's history. And the reason why is because it features an extraordinary 14-year-old girl who is doing the most amazing work with her nonprofit, Zoe's Dolls. So Zoe Terry took the course with her mom, Nakia Bowling, and often had to uh, join us uh, after school uh, for, for the program and the classes. Her story of me, which you'll hear shortly, uh, is uh, one of the best I've ever heard uh, of anyone at any age. And it's such an honor, uh, Zoe and Nakia, to work with you, to support you, and to watch as your nonprofit flourishes, leveraging in part some of what we taught you about how to raise awareness and market and, and, and tell the world about what you're doing through online tools. So uh, I welcome Zoe Terry and Nakia Bowling of Zoe's Dolls. And thank you, Zoe, so much for taking some time off of school uh, to actually join us here today. Thank you. So good afternoon and congratulations to all of um, our fellow classmates. This has been a very enriching um, process um, for both myself and for mm -hmm. Zoe as well. Um, you guys are the most supportive group of people that I've ever had the pleasure of working with. So thank you so much. And here's our real life case study. <laughs> first grade, I was bullied with the color of my skin and the texture of my hair. I was the only one in my class that looked like how I did. I was the only one with dark skin and puffy, kinky, curly hair. On top of that, my fine and gross motor skills were bad due to a stroke I had. These girls would make fun of me because of the color of my skin and the texture of my hair. They would call me slowpoke because I couldn't ride a tricycle as fast as they could. But instead of staying in that negative and dark place, I wanted to do something positive about that. I started my company called Zoe Solves because I wanted to let black girls know that their image is beautiful and they are special just the way they are. And since I was five years old, I loved playing with dolls. So I thought that dolls were a great way to portray the message that black girls are beautiful just the way they are. Since starting Zoe Solves eight years ago, I've given out over $36,000 to girls all over. I've reached over 40,000 girls. I've expanded Zoe Solves into six empowering programs to let girls know that they are beautiful and special just the way they are. My name is Zoe Terry. I am 14 years old. My pronouns are she, hers, and hers. And I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. I'm a single mom uh, raising a beautiful, strong black girl um, who is determined and focused. I come from a family of six siblings where I'm the only girl, I'm the oldest. Um, so I've always had to kind of have this leadership role. And when my daughter was bullied because of the color of her skin and the texture of her hair, I really wanted to do something to assist her to move from this place of negativity into this place of positivity and change the paradigm of where she was at. And so that was my, that became my mission in life besides being her mom is to help her overcome these situations that she would undoubtedly face as a black woman in society. I am Nakia Bowling. I am the mother of Zoe Terry and I am the director of programs at Zoe Dolls. So one of the biggest problems that we look to solve to solve with Zoe's Dolls is how do we really expand this eight and a half year old company of this young CEO? Um, we developed a really good branding in the community for our doll giveaways. People knew that she was the doll girl is what they kind of dubbed her. Um, and we and I myself was not so familiar with digital marketing and how to effectively really use it to expand our brand. And as my daughter got older, her advocacy voice increased and it matured with her age. And so she wanted 
talk about things that were really affecting her community, affecting women. Her advocacy grew to talk about gender inequality. Did a, a purchased an ad before? I thought I had purchased the ad before, but really, after um, being in um, biz hack, I learned all that I had really done was boost the post. Um, which is nowhere near, near the same. I'd never made a video uh, that was an ad campaign ever um, in my life. It was very, very intimidating at first, and I really wanted it to be just perfect. Um, and so on top uh, so on top of not having a familiarity with digital marketing, I had to put together this video ad that was really a daunting task for me, but we got through it. We created our ad. We were so excited about our first ad. We had everything we wanted in it. It was the first video ad we ever made. It's pretty cool. It was pretty cool. It wasn't the most crisp or even the highest quality compared to what my other classmates had put together. Their stuff was phenomenal, but it was ours and we owned it and we loved it and we really felt accomplished about it. Hello, my name So the results. Huh. Whew. So we did all of that with our video and the results were not what we were expecting. Our ad did not yield the results we were hoping. Our primary target audience were really Black women between the ages of 34 and 54 who liked things like Essence magazines, O magazines, who were advocates of girls, um, were the audience um, that looked like us. It was, um, that was our target audience. What we got was mostly men aged between uh, 25 to 54. 25 to 44. How, how could this be possible? We were sure about our audience. Well, we have one of the best, we have one of the best coaches in the game, I think, Mr. Ricardo Barris. He immediately um, sat down with us to figure out where the needle had skipped, right? Like where did, what happened? What, how could it go wrong? Like what, what, what happened? So um, the first thing that he did was look at our ad. And as soon as he looked at, it, at our ad, he discovered, oh, I think we figured out the, the problem. The first frame of our ad just says, meet Zoe. So men seeing something that says, meet Zoe, didn't really sound like a ad for a nonprofit. It sounded like an ad for, ooh, meet Zoe. And so a lot of men clicked on that. But as soon as the next frame came and we could see that in our data and in our analytics, the next frame came and they saw this little young girl talking about her project. They immediately clicked off. Um, so it was evident by our um, through plays that what people thought they were going to get was not what they got. And so we made the decision at the advice of our coach to end the ad before the end date, which is what we did. So I just wanted to include a little graphic here so that you could see our age and gender um, distribution, how significant it was of uh, how we have way more men than women um, to look at this. But from this, our impressions, we got 20,305 impressions. We had 15,456 clicks, but we did not want our ad to go to waste. So we took that same ad and we posted it on Instagram. And we also posted it just on our regular Facebook pages. And we actually generated some leads. We got Zoe got three speaking engagements from this. Um, we also had a ton of interviews that ensued after this. She has been on WEDR. She's been on Hot 105, Good Morning America, 99, we sit WEDR. Um, we, we got um, 10 new people who joined our newsletter just from seeing the ad that we created in this class. Um, the results, what we what we learned, I think the biggest result that we learned, it's okay if you don't get it right the first time out the box. 
you can always go back and improve it. And one of the things that um, I personally really learned was that you have to use your best selling point. Like Ricardo um, instructed, like Zoe should have been the first thing that people see. So they know right out, right out the box. They People know Zoe. They can uh, gener uh, resonate with her. And even people who don't know her, um, they see this young woman. They're like, oh, what is she up to? Let me do it. Let that be your selling point. Um, the video ad should have probably contained more pictures than text and should have been a little bit shorter. Um, and it's really important to understand what your call to action is in the ad. And again, it's okay to get it wrong or if it's not perfect. The aha moments. We did have some major uh, aha moments. Um, Zoe herself is our biggest marketing tool. We should use her at, at when, it, when possible um, all the time if we can. Use her image and likeness to draw attention to our brand. Um, Dan said one of the most profound thing, it was like low hanging fruit. I can't even believe I missed it. He said, use your newsletter more effectively. Um, literally, I almost fell out the chair. He suggested to use our newsletter to post things that would maybe appeal to an audience that wasn't our core audience, like articles on how to raise a woke white child or how to teach your child to appreciate different cultures. Um, it, it was just like, wow, yeah, that's perfect. Um, and also when at all possible, let Zoe do the talking and sell the brand. People react to her. Um, so those were our definitely aha moments. So what's next for us? We are definitely going to increase our skills in digital marketing. We are going to run more ads. As a matter of fact, we're in the process of, of running, um, preparing to run our second ad. I was determined Facebook had, Facebook had put a block on us until we could verify our identity, um, but they've lifted that now. So we're definitely going to run our second ad sometime this week. We're in the process of revamping our newsletter to incorporate the suggestions that Dan gave us. Um, we also build, built out our landing page that was suggested for POV with Zoe that was um, suggested by um, our coach, Ricardo. We fully have that landing page up and running and it's connected to an email server site. Um, and we're going to launch the podcast in summer of 2021. And I just wanted to show our landing page because Ricardo was so instrumental in helping us get this um, done. He has been fantastic and we got it done. Our landing page is up. And right now we've got over 120 signups um, just with the landing page being up a little less than a week and a half. So we're super excited about that. And that is everything. This class has been amazing. It has really changed my life. I feel more empowered. I don't think I know everything, you um, digitally involved. but I'm definitely uh, more digitally involved as Zoe would say. So this is, <laughs> this has been amazing. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Amazing. You know, and I, I, I've been um, uh, Zoe's and, and Nakia's coach. And I, I have to tell you, you know, I don't want to repeat uh, what she has said, but I really want to encourage you to continue to be empowered. I do feel like there's so much that, um, that you both uh, can learn and continue to learn. But I've, I've never been this excited and motivated to really see transformation happening through, through Zoe and, uh, and yourself. So congratulations. I'm really, really proud of you just, uh, you know, knowing where you came from to where you are. Like there's always this uh, magic moment that takes place in the Biza community, taking people from this to that. And, and that becomes exciting each time. And so I'm very excited for you and congratulations and keep up the good work and whatever else I can do to continue to add value. I mean, the Biza community, Dan has always been phenomenal in, in the encouragements and the feedback to you. So keep it up and let us know how best we can continue to help you to thrive. And I'd love to hear Zoe, what's next for you? I know you're, uh, what grade are you in and, and what class did you just, sorry? I was in world history. <laughs> so you just skipped world history. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. And uh, what grade? 
I'm in ninth grade. Awesome. At what school? I go to Miami Country Day School. Excellent. So what's next for you, Zoe? Obviously, uh, the, the world is your oyster. What are you thinking uh, in terms of the next couple years? What are you hoping to accomplish in high school or do next with uh, Zoe's Dolls? And then uh, obviously the podcast. And then uh, where do you want to go to college? Um, so I have a couple options right now, but I, I really want to go to Berkeley, but also because I want to major in political science. I want to be in the political field. I want to start off as a lawyer. Okay, I don't really, really need to get into that. But um, I should, it's probably better if I go to school in Florida, so probably like UF. I really want to go to Berkeley or um, Princeton, too. I know a really nice guy who's a Princeton alumnus, if you need to talk to him. Yeah, and I'm... <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really excited because I'm really into writing right now. I've always been really passionate about writing. So I'm working on a second book. I kind of want to take it a different angle with more poetry and story writing than anything. I really want to develop my voice in writing more and tell stories because I really enjoy telling stories. And That's awesome. There's a beautiful, uh, you know, I, I got my master's in the creative writing program at FIU and it's a fabulous program and they might even have some uh, classes that are available to undergraduates. So uh, I, I know the world is going to be yours and I can't wait to keep in track and, and, and please stay in touch. One other quick thing about um, Nakia is Nakia hasn't talked about this a lot, but she is the head of programs for the Opelaka CDC, uh, works very closely with my wife at Catalyst Miami and is a, a, a really important contributor to our community. Um, and I just want to thank you uh, on behalf of all of the families that need, uh, have been struggling uh, for, for the work that you and your staff does. Thank you. Thank you. I also have a gift for everyone. So um, I, wanted to, I wanted to empower girls. So I wanted you guys to help me with that message. So I, I want to give everyone a doll, an empowering letter, and in hopes for you to give out to a girl, any girl in your community that you think to have a doll and a letter just to show, to, to empower them, to let them know they're beautiful. I have an eight-year-old who lives in my house with me who I think will really be excited about the doll. Uh, I have actually a really quick, funny story about that. So the, the first doll that we ever gave my daughter uh, is a black doll. Uh, so we did that like, you know, we're, we're like woke white folks. So we gave her a black doll. Uh, and then when Henry was, uh, so that's my eight-year-old. And then when Henry was still in utero and we wanted to do a gender reveal, <laughs> We gave my daughter another doll. It was a boy doll. And she immediately called him Maria. Um, <laughs> she really wanted a sister badly. So anyway, we have uh, two little dolls. Uh, one is a black girl doll that she loves, Cece. And then uh, a little uh, boy doll named Maria. <laughs> so we'll, we could use one more doll uh, to round out the group. Thank you guys so much.